viewers, welcome to today's Line Northeast, a program that gives an overview of the developments in India's Northeast region. I'm your host Chandra Kala and the highlights of today's program are Center reviews security situation along the Myanmar border in Manipur Northeast infrastructure conclave in New Delhi attracts investors from across India world Naglan seeks to revive indigenous bamboo industry. And first edition of TK Arunachal Super League kicks off in Nahalagu. Concern over the exodus of Rohingya Muslims from Myanmar's Rakhine province, a team led by a high-ranking Home Ministry official, recently inspected the Indo-Myanmar border in Manipur. A report. India's northeast region shares 404 kilometers of an international border with neighboring Myanmar and a 318 kilometers with Bangladesh, making the region as the gateway to Southeast Asian countries. In view of ongoing violence in Rakhine province of Myanmar, which has triggered the outflow of Rohingya Muslims, various security measurements have been put in place across the region to check up the possibilities in flux of the illegal immigrants. In a bid to study the crown reality and for preventive security measurements, Centre government officials headed by Joint Secretary North East, Ministry of Home Affairs, Sadinder Gurk, and Special Secretary Internal Security, Rina Mitra, reviewed the security situation along the Myanmar border, including Indo-Myanmar's Commercial Trade Center and the Indo-Myanmar Friendship Bridge. Our task here was to understand how the FMR, that free movement regime, is functioning. So we have been to Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur and Mizoram to understand on ground like how the whole system is functioning. So we have got insights into it. We are doing uh, discussion with the state government and once like uh, a decisions are taken, like we will uh, formalize the system of functioning of free movement. The officials also met the security personnel of 11 Assam Rifles and inquired about frisking of traders and commuters at the security checkposts. At the same time, for better observation and research, the officials also took note of the average number of persons from India and Myanmar crossing the gate number two on daily basis. Apart from Moray, Chiripum has been termed as one of the vulnerable areas of the region as it is nearby Assam and shares border with Bangladesh. The area is prone to illegal infiltration from the neighboring countries. Rohingya issue has been a concern for the state government of Manipur. We have taken uh, various proactive measures, preventive measures, and uh, we have uh, no information about infiltration of Rohingyas into the state of Man Manipur as of now. Our focus has been on uh, Moray, and uh, more than that, our focus is on Jeribam Axis. So we have put up uh, a lot of security measures in Jiri area. Drive is going on almost every day, and we hope to uh, take care of the situation. Stringent security arrangements has been set up, and deployment of armed forces at various security checkpoints has been toppled in order to tackle unforeseen crises which may arise from ongoing Rohingya violence. In wake of the Rohingya crisis, the central and Manipur state governments are trying their best to maintain peace within our borders and in Myanmar too. We have allotted our you know, police forces. Uh, apart from that, we have allotted the uh, security forces. Wherever there are possibilities of such crossing over from across Myanmar, we are maintain, maintaining high alert and uh, so far we have not got any adverse report in this regard. Meanwhile, till now not a single report of mass exodus and influx of illegal immigrants from the neighboring borders has emerged. However, the state police and army personnel are still keeping strict vigil to maintain the security situation. Northeast Infrastructure Conclave was recently held in New Delhi to highlight the business potential of the region. The conclave organized by Confederation of Indian Industry also sought to bring in more investment into the remote hilly regions of India. 
Investors from across the country and the world attended the conclave. A report. India's northeast region is blessed with abundant natural wealth and has immense potential to emerge as one of the country's investment and tourism hubs. To bring the region's potential to investors' notice, the Confederation of Indian Industry recently organized Northeast Infrastructure Conclave in New Delhi. The event brought various stakeholders and investors together. There has been a tremendous ease of business compared to what it was in the earlier years. And to that extent, not only Northeast, but in fact, the entire country of India is very fast emerging as a favorite destination for investors. Investors within as well as also overseas. As trade leaders, you understand better than many of us that to expand business, to expand trade, to expand returns and outputs, you need to explore the areas which have remained unexplored and this is a huge huge potential area which has remained unexplored the conclave also shed light on the significance of india's act east policy which aims to promote economic cooperation cultural ties and develop strategic relationship with countries in the asia pacific region through continuous engagement at bilateral regional and multilateral levels thereby providing enhanced connectivity to the northeastern states. Northeast India has been a priority under the Act East policy as it provides an interface with the ASEAN region, thereby boosting socio-economic trade and business with the neighboring Southeast Asian countries. The necessity and importance of strengthening connectivity is ample. For North Northeast region, it's its own development for India its balanced development and inclusive growth. It is also a catalyst for uh, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India and Nepal for utilizing comparative advantage, efficient access to sea from landlocked countries and areas. And of course, it's a gateway between India and ASEAN for connecting vast economies and markets. The conclave invited investors to explore the full potential of the Northeast region and contribute to the process of India emerging as a global economic power. While addressing the conclave, Dr. Jitendra Singh highlighted on the permanent outlet named Purbashri being set up at Delhi Hart, which showcases unique textile and handloom products from the region that is already attracting visitors from all across India and even abroad. Singh said a venture capital fund for the Northeast region with Northeastern Development Finance Corporation Limited had been set up to provide capital for startups in Northeast region. Supporting young entrepreneurs from the region will ensure proper exploitation of the region's potential. Naveen Verma, secretary donor, was also present during the conclave. Moving on, youth of India's Northeast has always been heavily inclined towards sports. Besides being the master of various sporting activities like football, the region is inherited with some of the finest archers of India and the world. Today we introduce to you a young nationally acclaimed archer from the landlocked Manipur, who apart from being a master archer is earning his livelihood as bamboo bow and arrow maker and at the same time promoting entrepreneurial activities in the state. The northeastern state of Manipur is endowed with rich natural resource and is home to some of the best quality of bamboos and canes. Archery is one of the oldest arts still practiced today and the usage of bows and arrows in making it is immense. The landlocked Manipur is also known for having some of the best archers of India and the world as many youngsters from the state have already set a benchmark in the world of sports. Many are now eyeing into taking up the business of making archery equipment in order to earn a stable livelihood. Meet Shiram Shamoy from Manipur who was a nationally acclaimed archer himself and has now turned into young bamboo archery equipment maker. aduga ai isa hujik tokjeri se ai hana archery hai ma sana je ai 2002 degi sana jere adugo chahi 2007 adai degi sigi 
masanaji changi ba indanon gi bo and ero se ai sa ba hojar kuni masi tamok pa se khoi gi oja bi chao sarma ba mon kai digi ma gi makha da ma na ma na gi ba khoi ki ba tok tar ga di nam ta heu ta re na ma na mai ta tam bi ra kuni adi matung da khoi tuan chaben adai digi ai sa ba hojar kuni Apart from winning medals at the state and national level championships and being a nationally acclaimed archer, Shamwai was inspired by his coach to take up bamboo bows and arrow making and become self-employed entrepreneur. Since then, he has been learning the tactics of making bow and arrow along with archery from his coach, B. Chauba Sharma. In recent years, the business has taken a toll as varied range of equipments are getting popular all across the country. Most of his product demands come from Punjab, Varanasi, Delhi, Goa, Gurgaon, Assam, Jharkhand and Maharashtra. Demand is not the same. We have a supply of the demand. We have a supply of the demand. We have a supply of the demand. We have a supply of the government. We have a supply of the demand. 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 Apart from earning his livelihood by making bamboo bows and arrows, Chiram along with his few friends started an archery club in the name and style Friendship Archers Club in 2004 at Langthabal where he as a coach trained many archers of the state. Chiram in the year 2007 went on to venturing his independent factory at his residence of Thangjo Part 2 Kanchipur. To meet the ever-increasing demand of his equipment and to generate employment opportunities for the unemployed youths of the region, Chirom has recruited few staffs in his factory. Masi, aina sumuk, aina masi yau la kujai, aina masi kah u ki thabak si kara hai nje, u thabak kah sui. Aduh naya masi aina masi suge aduh gai hiju kara. Yungi kaygi hoyraju atau itu juga yang kerana menteri dan pengam kita hanya gaya si suhu yang begini. It is noteworthy that Shamuai and his team produces 10 to 15 good quality bows in a month and 500 to 1000 bamboo arrows per month. The price ranges from rupees 5000 to rupees 6000 for each set. Chirom now urges the state government to look onto the positive aspect of arrow and bow making and believes that provision of financial help can procure good machineries which would further enhance the production and at the same time create better job avenues for the educated unemployed of the state. Let us now take a look at some of the events that made news in the Northeast recently. Country's premier civil service coaching center, Alternative Learning System, has been officially inaugurated in Itanaku, making the first such institute in the landlocked Arunachal Pradesh. Speaking at the inaugural function as the chief case, Chief Minister Bema Kantu expressed gratitude to ALS Chief Executive Director Jojo Matthew for the initiative for bringing quality coaching facilities for civil aspirants of the state to their doorstep. The Novelty Steps in opening its study centre is an initiative of Helping Hands, an NGO and supported by the state government. The coaching centre will use the latest satellite telecommunication technology and will be a part of ALS centralised classroom. Students will directly interact with trainers and teachers at Delhi and classes will be held from Delhi through satellite. After a gap of nearly 30 years in the history of Mizoram State Assembly elections, the lone woman legislator Wang Lao Bui Chontu has been inducted in the Assembly and the first after 1987 to hold ministerial posts in the state. Mizoram Governor Lieutenant General Nipa Sharma administered a secret of office ceremony at Rajpawan in Aizol. Chontu assured to try her best for the welfare of the women. A treaty media workshop on reporting climate change in the Himalayas was held in Mizoram's Aizul city. Speaking at the inauguration of Indian Himalayas Climate Adaptation Program as chief case, Mizoram Governor Lieutenant General Nipa Sharma urged the tribals of the state to go back to their roots to ensure protection of environment for curbing climate change. 
The workshop, organized by SWIFT, a chance for development and cooperation, aimed to give awareness to the journalists in disseminating and creating public awareness on climate change and finding solutions to cardinal the damage affected by frequent natural disasters like floods and landslides. Center's Department of Science and Technology, Mizoram State Climate Change Cell, Mizoram Science, Technology and Innovation Council, and Center for Media Studies were the other collaborators for the workshop. The Renu Handum and Handicrafts Cooperative Society Limited from Manipur were recently awarded a prestigious NCTC 2017 Cooperative Excellence Award at the Sahar Samilan on the occasion of bud anniversary of Lakshman Rao Inamtar in New Delhi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi gave away the awards to Renu Arimpam in recognizing the excellence and outstanding achievement. Renu Handum Center brings new lease of life to destitute women in Manipur by giving opportunities to handloom and handicraft skill development, vocational training, marketing, etc. Well, for decades now, bamboo has played an integral part in the lives of residents of India's northeast region. Bamboo products are among some of the most popular in the country's hill state of Nagaland and numerous families in the province are dependent on the bamboo products industry for their sustenance. A report. Blessed with abundant natural wealth and a rich biodiversity, Nordis India is known for producing some of the finest varieties of bamboo. Well aware of the bamboo's versatility, the region uses it for a variety of purposes like for building boats, houses, shed and fences. Bamboo is also used extensively in the paper manufacturing industry apart from being used for making handicrafts and several day-to-day -day articles. Naglin is one of the states in the region which is working to promote and develop the bamboo industry and conserve bamboo forests. In 2004, Naglin launched the Naglin Bamboo Mission to preserve and promote the evergreen plant as a resource as well as an enterprise. Under the mission, many youths from the state have been given skill training and indigenous bamboo products promoted for diversified uses to generate employment opportunities. Today, here at the resource center, we are trying to upgrade the skills, we are trying to give them uh, training programs so that the skill, the indigenous talent that they already have becomes a marketable uh, kind of an item that they make of bamboo and uh, gives out oxygen so much faster, so much more than any other plants. And uh, the best thing about it is that it, um, it grows back so fast. Emphasizing the importance of bamboo for the state government, World Bamboo Day was celebrated in Timapu, Nagaland's largest city. Secretary of Ministry of Development of Northeast Region, Navin Verma, and Chief Minister D.R. Ziliang planted saplings at the event. Verma gave insightful tips on converting the resources into wealth, and one option is the Numalika refinery for bioethanol. Poor villagers, when they get married within a month, they have to make bed with bamboo, and quickly the bed is already set. It's like that. The house of every village is made of bamboo, 60%. So we live with bamboo, and bamboo is our way of life. It is not artificially growing. Taking such initiative will enhance the bamboo production in the state and region as a whole. At the same time, it will help address the unemployment issue in the state and improve the economy. 
Well, next we have sports has been an integral part in the life of the people of the northeastern region as it can be dated back to ancient times. In the modern era, the footballing culture is no foreign to the people of the region and it is considered to be the soccer powerhouse. Celebrating life in sports, football fever has gripped the landlocked Arunachal Pradesh with the inauguration of the first edition of TK Arunachal Super League 2017. Let's football, northeastern region, the powerhouse of soccer in the country, is marching towards the world-class sports zone by imparting skills and providing facilities to youngsters so that they continue to get better at the game. With the onset of the first edition of TK Arunachal Super League 2017 at Rajiv Gandhi Stadium in Nahar Lagoon, people of the state have welcomed the two-month-long football tournament with great enthusiasm. Organized by the Arunachal Pradesh Football Association, a total of seven football clubs from the state are vying each other for the top honour of the tournament. The Super League aims to bring professionalism into the game of football in the state and to unearth the talents by providing platforms to the young players. In Arunachal Pradesh, we have started professionalism in football in the first time. और फर्स्ट डे पब्लिक का सपोर्ट बहुत अच्छा है अच्छा रहा और सभी अरुणाचल के वासियों से मैं रिक्वेस्ट करना चाहूँगा आगे भी आए अपना क्लब को इनकरेज करें ताकि वो फुटबॉल के द्वारा वो अपना जिंदगी बना सके मैं सभी पब्लिक से मैं रिक्वेस्ट करता हूँ कि आप सुपर लिखो वीकेंड्स में है मैचेस आप सत्तरदे संडे हैं आज काफ़ी तादाद में ऑडियंस आया है the tournament was open with a match between the Capital Complex FC and Todo United FC amid loud cheering from the spectators. The curtain raiser match was won by the Capital Complex FC by 1-0 score. Hanu ya local ladka hum jitna se hum log coordination banake hum team banake aaye lekin hum log ko laga ki kahi na kahi hum log ka average mein agar bahar wala koi aake hum log compete karta hai to हम लोग के लिए मतलब कुछ प्रॉब्लम हो सकता है ना तो उसी हिसाब से देखिए हम लोग लड़का लोग पहले से मेंटली फिट था कि बाहर से लड़का आने वाला है हम लोग अपना तरफ से पूरा फुल फाइट करेगा और उसी के कारण से हम लोग ये रिजल्ट मिला हुआ है मार्किंग द ओपनिंग सेरेमनी अपार्ट फ्रॉम सॉकर गेम सेवरल सॉन्ग एंड डांस परफॉर्मेंसेस इन थ्रोल द ऑडियंसेस In a note of appreciation and acknowledgement, players who represented Arunachal for the first time in a national level football tournament in 43rd Santosh Trophy held in Kerala in 1993 were also felicitated during the kick-off ceremony. This first of its kind Super League in the state will be used as a tool to improve skills of the players by acquiring and learning techniques from each other. Also, it scaled up the team spirit and sense of brotherhood among the players. नेक्स्ट मैच नेक्स्ट मैच में ट्राई करेंगे स्कोर करने के लिए आज का मैच में स्कोर नहीं कर पाए अगला मैच में कोशिश करेगा और अच्छा गेम करें और स्कोर करें Such tournament inspires football enthusiasts of the region and at same time it promotes football as profession in the state and country at large Well, as the entire country celebrates Durga Puja, one of India's most awaited festivals, Northeast region is also soaking in the festive fervor. The five-day festival marks the victory of Durga over the evil buffalo demon king Maheshasura. We have a report. Every year, India comes alive with the celebration of Durga Puja. The fever has gripped countries Northeast region too. People across the region are celebrating the five-day festival dedicated to Hindu goddess Durga, synonymous with power and feminine power. Devotees in Assam's capital city of Guwahati have been thronging the revered Kamakya temple to seek blessings of the goddess. Situated atop Nilachal Hill, the Kamakya temple is one of the prominent Shakti Peets of the country. और माँ की कृपा लेके जाते हैं वो माँ का इतना चमत्कार है यहाँ का कि जो माँ बुला थी उसको वहीं पर रखते हैं और माँ संपूर्ण पूजा कराते हैं और माँ की भली भली कामनाएं आती हैं हम कम से कम पांच साल से आते हैं Also known as Durga Utsav in the northeast region, the festival marks the victory of Durga over Buffalo Demon King Mahishasur. Durga Puja epitomizes the victory of good over evil. 
Markets have been flooded with fashionable outfits and decorative items and lights ahead of the festival. Residents, both young and old, go pandal hopping, marveling at the various ornate idols of Durga, offering prayers and eating sacrament. बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है ये 101 फीट या 110 फीट का है यहाँ पे बिष्णुपुर यहाँ पे पूजा में और बहुत दिन से इसका डिस्कशन चल रहा था एंड वी आर हियर टू सी एंड आप क्राउड देख सकते हैं दैट वी आर लाइक एंजॉयिंग वेरी मच अगी Several theme-based pandals have come up across the city. A 100-feet bamboo idol of Durga is also eyeing a spot in the Guinness World Records for the tallest bamboo structure. Festive spirit was also high in Agartala, capital city of Tripura. Durga Puja is most commonly referred to as Navratri in northern and western parts of India. Millions of Hindus fast and offer prayers to please the goddess during this festival. Some restrict their diet to fruits and vegetables, spurning meat, onions and garlic. With that, we have come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. Do connect with us through our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. At anyindia underscore ANI, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest news updates from the Northeast. I'm your host Chandrakala. Goodbye and take care.